Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Wix and contains spoilers for Glass. So there are some videos where I really hate the movie I'm talking about and have no problem ripping it apart. The movie I'm talking about today, though, isn't really one of them. To be honest, I kind of admire this movie. I don't have any real hate for it, and there are even aspects of it that I think are pretty good. But after watching it a couple times and really thinking over it, I have to say, I just don't think the movie works. In fact, in many ways, I think it was almost a doomed concept from the start, and in this video, I'm gonna dig into why. So the film landscape was drastically different in the year 2000. The studios were more star-driven and less dependent on franchises. Superhero movies were barely just beginning to transform into the massive behemoth they are now, and in fact, Marvel Comics had filed for bankruptcy just a few years earlier. And M. Night Shyamalan was like the newly anointed king of Hollywood. The Sixth Sense was a huge hit in every sense of the word. It made bank at the box office, was a huge crowd pleaser, and was pretty well loved by critics. And even though it wasn't technically his first film, it announced to the world that its young director was a force to be reckoned with. A few years later, Newsweek would even call him the next Spielberg. It was during those early years when the man could apparently do no wrong that Unbreakable was released. Unbreakable isn't really a superhero movie in how we think of them now. It's a slow-paced, ponderous family story, first and foremost, and it's a really good one. Sure, there is superpowers and Sam Jackson monologuing about comic books, but there's no high-flying action or insane set pieces to be found. It's just a solid, well-directed deconstruction of comic books built on the structure of a family drama. Then fast forward over a decade to Split, which is also a good movie but in a very different way. You all kind of know what happened between the two movies. M. Night managed to go from respected auteur to kind of a laughingstock, releasing one hated movie after another. Until 2015 when he managed to gamble and win big, using his own money to finance the found footage surprise hit The Visit. It turned a nice profit, but it didn't really feel like an M. Night Shyamalan movie, for better and for worse. It felt like a solid, if a bit generic, low-budget horror movie. Split was a much better film in my opinion, but it also feels like M. Night kind of keeping his natural impulses in check. But that's what made the ending of Split so ambitious. It was M. Night announcing to the world that he's not going to settle for just being a fun horror director. He kind of wants to go back to his glory days. It was a cool ending, but I also think it was kind of a problem right from the start. Because really, Split and Unbreakable are vastly different movies with very different tones and styles. Trying to meld them together is a little tricky, and I think at the end of the day, maybe impossible. A lot of the young people who love Split and wanted to see the sequel probably don't care that much about Unbreakable. And a lot of the Unbreakable fans who've wanted a sequel forever probably didn't really care about the more over-the-top horror tone of Split. This movie tries so hard to be a sequel to both films, and I think it shortchanges both of them and adds an extra twist that would seem out of place in either. The movie opens giving us exactly what we'd expect from a Split sequel, with the Horde holding a few cheerleaders captive and giving McAvoy plenty of chances to switch personas. And don't get me wrong, he's really great at it. But I think more than Split, Glass leans on this too much. In Split, we were in Casey's perspective for much of the movie, so the transitions between personas kind of felt like they had stakes. When, say, a goofy one changed into a really scary one, it provided a lot of suspense. But it kind of rarely feels like that here, and cycling through all the different personas feels more like showing off than doing anything that's that important to the story. It's still enjoyable, but its impact has been dulled a little bit. Then we jump straight into the Unbreakable stuff, and I have to say, this kind of bummed me out a little bit. We see Bruce Willis break into some teen's house who are punching people on the street just to post it online. Already that's kind of goofy, like something out of Bruce Willis's bland Death Wish remake. Doesn't really feel like Unbreakable. And Bruce Willis just isn't trying anymore. And look, I love the guy, he's a great actor, but he's just looked checked out for over a decade now. Even when he revisits old characters like here or in Die Hard 5, he just seems like he's giving slightly different variations of the same performance. The strong, mostly silent, slightly cranky old guy who doesn't put up with anything. Honestly, I'm just really tired of it. Admittedly, David Dunn was a really restrained, quiet performance in Unbreakable, but there was still so much going on in there. Willis used to be able to convey a lot with just one sad look or amused smile. 
Now he just usually looks annoyed that they haven't installed ESPN Plus in his trailer yet. The movie doesn't really do him any favors though, giving him easily the most thankless role of the main trio, and ending his character arc in a way that had some shock value but also just didn't work for me. They drowned him in a tiny puddle. And I can kind of see the logic here, Unbreakable was very committed to asking what superheroes would look like in real life. So maybe it's fitting that its hero doesn't go out in a mythic blaze of glory, but dies in the most mundane way a superhero could. But that's kind of all undone the second you reveal it was the work of an ancient secret society basically bent on making sure the public doesn't know that mutants exist. That's about as heightened and comic booky as it gets. So Glass is trying to be grounded, realistic, and have all these crazy comic book twists at the same time, and it just ends up feeling unsatisfying on both counts. The other two leads fare a lot better. Once he actually gets a chance to act, Sam Jackson looks like he's having a great time here. I especially liked that horrifying flashback to a childhood trip to the fair, and I think his death is a lot more effective than Bruce Willis's. Is it a little weird that the woman playing his mom is five years younger than Jackson? Yeah, okay, a little bit, but overall I'd say that Glass is at its very best when focusing on its titular character. And like I said earlier, McAvoy is great as always. The Horde is really entertaining, but okay, can we talk about Casey because this was so weird. His victim from the first film is back and apparently in a really forgiving mood. I can understand her feeling bad for the Horde and maybe even liking a few of his personas, but Casey being so devoted to helping Kevin is just bizarre to me. We're talking about the entity that kidnapped her and killed her friends. More than that, he ate her friend's stomach. But Glass doesn't really have the time to devote to exploring how she feels about that now. Instead, she's just there in service of Kevin's character arc. And it just feels off. If the Horde's material feels undercooked, Casey's story feels like it was never even put on the grill. She's just a plot device here. And speaking of plot devices, let's talk about Sarah Paulson and that twist. Paulson trying to convince our leads that they don't have superpowers goes on forever. And here's the thing, we've seen Split and Unbreakable. We know they have superpowers, that's been very established. So to spend the entire second act watching our characters question this seems kind of like a huge waste of time. It feels like padding in a movie that already is a bit too long. And like I said, the secret society feels a little too over the top for the world of Unbreakable, but I do think it's a cool idea. Mostly though, they seem there to have someone for Glass to one-up at the end. And that ending is fine, I guess, but I don't think it lands like M. Night intended, as it doesn't feel like a satisfying conclusion for any of the characters except Glass himself. I wanted to love this movie, but in the end, it kind of feels like a mixed bag of ideas that never quite comes together. So yeah, it's too bad that Glass was kind of a letdown, but I have some good news too. I'll be posting written reviews of every episode of Young Justice Season 1 starting next week on a new website. I've actually never seen the show, so I'm super excited to dive in. And you can find the link to the site in the pinned comment or description below. And that website is all thanks to Wix, which I use to create it. What makes Wix so great is there's so many things you can build with it. It doesn't matter if you're booking clients for work, need a place to create a great gallery online for your art, or just want to set up a storefront, or maybe you want to write about superheroes too. Wix has you covered, and they handle the heavy lifting by giving you a reliable hosting site that keeps your work safe and secure. Wix is an amazing resource if you're looking to create a site with total creative freedom. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner like me or a skilled designer, they're going to have you covered. So if you're looking to create a beautiful site today, head over to wix.com slash go slash Captive Midnight, which I've also included a link to in the video description and pinned comment below. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.